So I'm back again with a completely different video than the one I thought I would be recording. Uh, I, I've actually tried to record this video about four times already, but each time uh, just didn't seem right. Uh, so, uh, but hopefully I can get it right this time, but yeah, yeah, so this video is going to be, uh, about the recent events that have been going on, uh, such as the uh, Black Lives Matter protests slash movement. Uh, yeah, 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 because I, uh, well, first, full, disclo full disclosure, I'm white, so take this video as a grain of salt. I think that's the right saying, maybe. Just making this video to show my support for the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, not to remain silent. Uh, I've made uh, some videos in the past about me having to speak up more and and how I, I shouldn't remain silent so much. So this is me not being silent, I guess. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, uh, last week I I did end up going to a vigil for uh, people who have been killed by police uh, is where the speaker would read out the name uh, of someone who died at the hands of police and then the crowd would repeat the name back. Yeah, yeah. And the, there, there were a lot of names, some that I were, was aware of before and others not so much. And it, it really wasn't a complete list just because there's so many others, so many other names of people who haven't gotten the, the uh, attention they deserve. But like, like there, there's this one case I just heard about recently uh, about uh, a woman named Emerald Black. That, that's her actual name. And she, she's a black woman who was pregnant and pulled over by the cops while, while she was riding in the car. And then police just dragged her out of the car and just beat her and stomped on her and she ended up miscarrying her baby. So it's just awful and horrific and should not have happened. And just, and, well, I just don't want to say just, but yeah, it's a, another story that on the ever growing list of police brutality victims. Yeah, and going to the visual, visual. Yeah, going there, it was kind of surreal. Just since we are still in the middle of a pandemic, don't want to forget that. And and yeah, and because of that, everyone was wearing a mask. Yeah, everyone that I saw, and and everyone was spread out six feet from each other about yeah and there were a lot of people there like hundreds i think yeah yeah and i also think that the p 
pandemic is one of the reasons why these protests have uh, been growing and getting so much attention because there's still a lot of people out of work, myself included, so they have more time to go to uh, events like protests. And then also there's no sports going on, so more attention, uh, more attention is being focused on the news and uh, and and being paid more to news like the movement, which, which is good, needs all the attention. Yeah, and I hope we actually get some substantial reform because uh, police brutality has been going on for way too long and black people have been saying that for just as long. Uh, uh, I mean, even if you just look at pop culture and like the movie Do the Right Thing had uh, police brutality in the plot and it came out in 1989. And then also the year before, uh, the rap group NWA came out with uh, their protest song, Fuck the Police, yeah, which was you know, anti-police brutality and police violence. And and I've, heard, I've listened to that song and it, it it has this line that says, police think they have the authority to kill a minority. Yeah, I, I think that line is just so great. It, it just sums up uh, so much. Yeah, in, in my opinion, I, I think that's the best line of the song and one of the best lyrics uh, ever written in music. And also police brutality also overlaps with people with mental illness, which is also getting talked about uh, too, uh, although not as much. Yeah, it's also a really big problem because I've uh, read that uh, approximately half of all people killed by police have some sort of mental illness. And, and there's also been some cases that have made the news, uh, like with Charles Kinsley. Uh, he, he was out one day looking for uh, his pa patient who had wandered away from a group home and uh, the patient was a, a guy uh, not not much younger than me and he had autism and and the, the police showed up and didn't know how to handle it uh, that they said that uh, the guy wasn't being responsive which yeah yeah that goes hand in hand with autism and and then Charles Kinsley, who is black, he he came along and uh, police ended up shooting him. Uh, and there, there's video footage of him on the ground with, with his hands up and he's uh, right, right next to his patient who's you know, sitting, sitting on the ground and has no idea what to do. Uh, and yeah, f fortunately, Charles Kinsley did survive. He, uh, he wasn't killed, but uh, I, I read that last year, uh, the, all of the police uh, in, in the shooting were uh, let off and no punishment for them. So, 
yeah, that's just outrageous. And and there's also a, a case that happened just last year uh, where a, a black woman named and uh, Pamela Pam Ella Turner, who was diagnosed with uh, paranoia, schizophrenia, and she was tased to death by police who used stun guns on her. Yeah, yeah, that that happened last year, and the um, the case is still ongoing. Uh, I, I know Pamela Turner's family uh, filed a lawsuit against the police. So race and mental illness have some uh, overlapping areas with police brutality. Uh, and yeah, and, uh, it, it hits uh, a little close to home for me, uh, cause, uh, I, I, uh, I used to go to this, uh, like young adults with autism, uh, uh, social group, uh, which I, I think I've mentioned before on, on this channel and, and what, one of the people, uh, I met there were uh, like f friends t today, and uh, he's black and also diagnosed with autism, and he's uh, not much younger than me, so, and um, like well, one day I was. Uh, over at his house for a, like a party. Uh, I noticed uh, that one of the cars at his house had a, a note taped to uh, both uh, both windows on the side, the drivers and passengers, and the the notes. Uh, said uh, uh, something like officer uh, both the drivers and passengers windows are broken and will not roll down uh, so will you allow me to open the, the door and show you my identification and uh, yeah, he had those notes on his windows because uh, he's uh, afraid of police uh, and when what they can do to him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I can say I've never had bad experience with them. Which which would would be my white p privilege? Yeah, I've seen this meme uh, online where it says it's a privilege to learn about racism and not have to experience racism. So yeah, that's me learning about racism and police brutality. And you can just watch police brutality uh, through all of the videos that are coming out uh, sh showing police attacking peaceful protesters that are so yeah yeah it's just yeah just those videos are just so awful and there's so many and uh, the, the police look like they're prepared for war. So they go out and look for war. No, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, it needs to change. A lot needs to change.
everything needs to change, I guess. Yeah, so I guess this has been another political video that I've done, and uh, because of the reactions I got from my last political video that I did a month ago, I won't have comments on this video. Uh, but but I, I will put a whole bunch of information uh, in the description below. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, all, all sorts of links uh, people should check out. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. And yeah, I. I wore the right shirt for this video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my political statement. Or political stance, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah, let me just end this video by saying... And my light just went out so close uh, so close to going out after i finished <laughs> but okay well let me just end this video by saying black lives matter